Good afternoon everyone, this is Michael from Car Crazy. Welcome to my second video, and this time it's of my Land Cruiser. Right, I, I ordered it back in February or March and uh, it arrived last week, so I've had it about a week. I've done about 500 kilometers with it so far. And um, so today I'm going to do a general re uh, review of it, uh, starting on the outside and then inside. I'm sure I'll forget to mention some things, um, so if there's something I've forgotten you want to know about it, just uh, ask me in the comments and then I'll uh, answer you after. Okay, anyway, let's have a little walk around the outside first. This is the TX model I went for. And it's white, it's actually um, metallic pearl white. I've got the windows blacked out. the front with a nice big grille and the chrome accents around it and lights there you've got the spots there with the chrome around it I've even got the chrome like a chrome trim inside the inside the light here around the lights I think it looks quite nice The roof rails I had fitted, they don't come with roof rails, I had them fitted because um, in winter I go skiing so if I want to put my ski racks on I can, which obviously I can't if I haven't got the roof rails on. So that's an extra. The black tints on the window is also extra, which I had added. Okay, well, I guess some of you would like to know how much ground clearance this thing has. So, for those of you who are interested, there we go. That's about 35 centimetres, which is uh, equates to, I think, about nearly 14 inches. So, yeah, it's about 14 inches ground clearance. Obviously, as to the side steps, now there are things underneath that do hang a bit lower. So if you're going off-road onto rocky ground, obviously you've got that to bear in mind. You've still got a lot of ground clearance there. But if you're driving in just snow or mud, where if that catches the bottom a bit, that doesn't really matter. You've got a lot of ground clearance. For the back, there's a mountain of clearance. If you go to the bottom of the wheel, you've, still, you've got about 40 centimetres We've got a lot more there. Alright, the wheels. For anyone who's interested in how big the wheels are on here, they're 70, about 76, 75, 76 centimetres. I think that's 31 inches. That equates to. And they're 265, 65, R17. Six spokes. The, the top of the range model has 18 inch wheels actually, but thinner tyres. But I think I prefer this with the smaller wheels and the more chunky tyres. One, it looks better, and two, you get a better ride anyway. Uh, I think any, any of the big four wheel drives look better with small wheels and big chunky tyres. And they just function better off road anyway. I, I turned the wheel, I parked with the wheel turns so you can see what it is. That's the tyres that were on it. Okay, I guess a lot of you are probably interested to see the engine, so here you go with the engine. The bonnet has shocks on it, so you've got no bonnet, so you just simply open it and let it go up and that will stay there. That's the engine, that's a diesel, 2.8 litre diesel. 201 horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque. 
put some soundproofing on there to make it a bit quieter. Actually for a diesel it's not that bad. It's Obviously you can tell outside it's a bit noisy, but inside it's pretty quiet really. As you'll hear in a minute. Right, that's the outside. Let's have a look in the inside of the car a bit. Ah, by the way, to open and lock this, before we go inside, if I just touch that, it will lock. All I've got to do is just do that, and it will open the doors like that. For the boot, you can, you've got two buttons here. Oh, which one is it? Um, that one locks. Look at that. Now that one's locked, right. Now that one opens, okay. The top button locks and the bottom open. I don't really use them buttons, but anyway, they are there if you want. Right, the boot, when you open it, the good thing with this, it's got like a shock absorber thing here. So you can open it just a little bit. I don't know how small amount before that closed. You can open it like that, like that, halfway. Or from there onwards, you can open it where you want, and it will stay there. It doesn't just go swinging open, which is really handy. Right, that's, here's the boot. I've got a few more bits in, so... But anyway, as you can see, there's a fair bit of space in here. I've got this, like, privacy shelf you can pull up and uh, cover up so people can't see in. Although I've got black windows, so you're not going to see a lot. Anyway, you can't really put much on here. It's, it's flimsy, it's not meant, it's more of a curtain, it's not really meant to put things on. And if you want to take it off, you just simply pull that in like that, and that whole thing can come out. Like that. And then you've got a ton of space in here. Those, those seats will of course fold down, they'll fold down flat, so you've got even more space. In fact, almost enough space to lay in. Anyone who's short could, could actually sleep in the back of here. And just clip back in like that. I've got this, I had this put in. It's like a plasticky rubber mat. As I go, as I do, I'm going to do camping and I've got the dogs I'll have in here, my camp and my camera gear, it'll get messed up. So I thought, have this, it's easy. You can just wipe it, it's plastic, take it out, wash it. It's really easy to keep clean. So I bought that as extra as well. Right, on here, in the back door here, is like a tool kit for changing, when you change a wheel. Um, that's it. That's your, your, your tire iron and the jack lever. And in here is empty. You can put other bits in of your own, whatever. A few small bits and pieces. And 12 volt socket there. In here, is a, somewhere in there, is a is the jack for the car. Right, now oh, that's a subwoofer. That one, I've got a, I've got a really good uh, sound system and navigation system I had installed in here. It's got 14 speakers. We've got one there, another one there. I'll show you the rest in a minute. So anyway, that's the back. Right, let's have a look in the back of the car. And here in the passenger part. Like that. Right. There you go, you've got armrest there, or what can be or you've got your two drink cup holders there. That's your rear air vent for the rear passengers. You've also got down here 12 volt socket. If you can see that. And there as well. Another speaker, there's a door speaker there, there's another one there. And same the other side obviously. And there's your pockets to put your other bits and pieces, phone or drink bottle or whatever. There's plenty of space in here because I can sit in here quite easy even though that chair has been pulled back a long way. I can still sit in here quite easily. 
That's very comfortable as well. I'm about six foot, 181 centimeters, and also got loads of headroom. Loads of headroom. So, right, let's go to the other side. Okay, right, and the driver's side now. And we've got a door bin there. Seats in here like that. These are manual adjustable, not electronically adjustable, but um, you do have electronic lumbar adjustment there. The top of the range model does have electrical adjustable seats and heated and cooling seats, but I didn't go for that. I didn't want that because I don't adjust my seats. Once I'm once it's set for me, that's it. It's pretty much only me going to drive it, so I don't need to keep adjusting seats. Um, so I went for the this model and just put a few bits in that extra that I wanted. That's for your mirror adjust and your start stop. That's your light switches. Um, that bottom one here is actually for washing the lights. Push that, you get soapy water spray all over the lights to wash them. Right, let's get in. That's what it's like inside. Oh, yes, yeah, got that's the door speaker. It's about eight inch, six, eight inch speaker there. Got some more speakers up here. Another one there. And same the other side. And in the middle here's a that's a mid-range speaker. So lots of speakers in this car. I think 14 or 16. And drive recorder. I've got that. That's for back and front. Right. We've got here. That's a USB that come with the car. That's actually a 12 volt socket, but I've got the USB double USB socket put in there. Unfortunately, they don't come with many it's USB sockets in their car. Only come with one, so I've increased it to three now. So if you've got lots of devices, um, yeah, you'll need to get an extender or something so you've got more sockets. Right, ah, let me show you this. All right, you've got this flat tray here, which is, I guess you can put your phone in or something like that. Some just small flat things. If you push the number two button, you've got like a fridge. That's actually a mini fridge or cool box. There's a down in here. There's an air vent, and that's blowing cold air. So um, yeah, that keeps all your stuff cold, which is very handy in the hot weather. All right, you've got that. There's a push that. And you've got two drink cup holders there. And you've got this here. Push that, and you've got a little space for sunglasses or whatever. And actually up here has a sunglass holder. You can actually put your sunglasses in there anyway. And I'm not using it at the minute. Right, um, down here. That's the that's the control for the uh, for the four wheel low range. This is full. Uh, by the way, this is full time four wheel drive. So there's you don't have to select four wheel drive or two wheel drive. It's always four wheel drive high. And then you just simply put it into low when you need and that's the that's for your diff lock that's for your traction control where it's actually take it off if you don't want it the hill descent and it's got second gear start so you can actually start it off in a higher gear if you want um it has that right oh right let's let's start it up and you can see what it's like It's like when it starts up. Right, you've got all your various things like your trip meters and shows what your average is. Um, you've got your compass. That shows you what's playing. That's if you've got any messages. You've got various other settings here as well. Which I haven't actually played with them all yet. When you go down, you can go down. So if you're in, when you're driving, if you're on uh, drive and echo mode, that shows you how how echo you're driving. That's that. If you want electronic speedo as well as the analog, that's for the diesel particle filter. 
I think that's the, that's the cleaning, that shows you how, it, how much it's cleaning the filter as you're driving along. Add blue, I'm not really sure what that is for anyway at the minute, but anyway. You see I've done 524 kilometers with this car so far, in a week I've had it. Um, that's that's what I'm averaging at the minute, 10.5 kilometers per litre. So I've done 524 and I've got 226 litres, um, kilometers left until empty. So and this one actually, every time you start the engine up, this resets. This is the this resets every time, and uh, this is the running one. This keeps running but you can reset this as well so so far I've done has been averaging 10.5 kilometers a litre and that's under various driving conditions motorway small roads that sort of thing so that's the average it's doing at the minute and it's been running so once it's running that should do a bit better but um, yeah that's probably going to do about at the minute looks like on if you're going on sort of all different various routes including like being in traffic going through town motorway this is a bit of everything it's probably going to get about 11 11 and a half i suppose at best i haven't gone a long way yet on the motorway yesterday i did 200 kilometers did about 80 no oh, 80 100 kilometers one way and then the same coming back so but um maybe on a long journey that might be a bit better but anyway that's about the what it's average in this car at the moment. Right, that's the navigation system. The map, audio, oh, all right, that's that one. I've been watching the YouTube video, so that pick up the YouTube on there as well. Um, anyway, that's the menu. The city destination, you've got your audio, you've got uh, T Connect, your apps. You can see. You can put all your apps and things on, which I haven't done yet. I've got to install that. So anyway, so you, yeah, but you can put all your phone apps on with your good if it, um, the um, Android and your Apple Play. That can all be connected on here. Um, and you've got your phone, obviously. I pick up all your phone numbers and everything. Um, right, this is the temperature control thing, and whatnot. So that's got that's the driver side. You've got the passenger side, so you can have different temperatures. So one can have it hot, one can have it cold, or whatever you want. We can put it on auto. Right, oh, we've got the glove box here. It's a fairly sizable glove box. So you can get a fair bit inside that. Right, I don't know if you can hear the engine or not running. It's fairly quiet inside, you rev it a little bit. It's got one thing you, you I don't know if you can tell, if I keep this straight, if I keep this level when I rev it, it shakes the car. <laughs> it's got quite a bit of power in it. It shakes the car when you rev it. Right. Outside on this outside. You can really hear it's a diesel when they're outside, but inside the car it's fairly quiet really for a diesel. So ah that's your that's your controls for your stereo. Change channel and your channels and modes and things. That bit's for as I was showing you earlier, that's to do all your things on the display there and this bit here is for the cruise control right while I, while, why I had this system set um, put in here this is the top of the range of the navigation systems available um, a lot of the reason is for that the camera it's got a 360 degree camera and a bird's eye view camera so that makes it really handy for parking because this is a big car and especially at night you can't see anything much. So um, I'll show you if we just drive around here how easy it is to park this thing. Mind 
just here. I could be anywhere like totally out of line. Exactly in the middle, you can get really you can get right in the middle of your parking place really easy. I'm just doing that with one hand actually, so but um, yeah, so it's really handy. And you can see obviously, you can see all the, all the corners of the car, so it makes it really handy for parking. So that's why I went for this system. And uh, it's also got a sense of anyone walk near the car, it picks up the people walking near the car as well. So or if you've got cyclists come down the side, that will pick them up and uh, that warn you as well. So that's all very handy. Um, I've also got that's one other thing that's got on here is the lane. De it's got lane departure warning. That there's for the lane departure warning. When you're driving along, if you go over the line, that will make a beep 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 sound. Um, but you can cancel it if it gets annoying when you're going down small roads. Another thing you've got here, which I nearly forgot to tell you, you can dim your little switch little dial thing here right there and you can just uh, make it brighter but, uh, yeah you can't see it now obviously it's daytime but um, when it's dark when all the lights are on everything here these all light up light blue and on the steering wheel here's a very light like a pale blue light it's a really lovely color it's very easy on your eyes and really easy to see Okay, that was a short overview of my car, and um, which, yeah, so far I'm very happy with it. I love it. It's great to drive, very comfortable. Um, it's great on the motorway or on the small roads. But it is big, of course, as you can see, it, it fill up a parking place. There's really not much space. Um, so that's something to bear in mind if you buy one of these. Um, they take up a lot of space. In fact, they fill an entire parking place up. Um, so that's why I really recommend getting paying a bit more for the expensive navigation system and then get the 360 degree camera put in. You'll really, you'll really appreciate having that, especially at night time or if you're going down tight roads. While you're high up, you get a good view, of course. Um, still, you can't always see where the corners are at the bottom of the car and things, and especially at night time. So yeah, anyway. Well, that was it. I probably missed some things. I'm sure I forgot to mention some bits. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, if there's something you want to know that I didn't mention or say, and if I know the answer, I'll let you know in the comments. So, um, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I shall have another video of this car in about a month's time because I'm doing an upgrade on the inside of the car. What it is, I'm not going to tell you now. Um, but... I'll show you in about a month's time what the upgrade is and the reason why I did it. So um, anyway, that's something to look forward to. Once it gets cold and we get some snow, if we get if we get some decent snow this year, I'll be taking it out in the snow and uh, do some snow driving with it. So you better see how that goes in snow. I'll probably do some off-roading with it somewhere sometime as well. Um, so yeah, for now that's about it. And uh, I'd say. Please, if you enjoyed it, subscribe and uh, like. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Oh, by the way, there'll be another video coming out shortly in the next week or two-ish. And that'll be of the BMW. The next one. It's a BMW 116i. So that'll be my next video. Okay, thank you for watching. Goodbye.